हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू आई सी यूनर्स यूट्यूब चैनल ए पेशेंट हैड ए टोटल थायरॉयडेक्टमी येस्टडे द पेशेंट इज कंप्लेनिंग ऑफ टिंगलिंग अराउंड द माउथ एंड इन द फिंगर्स एंड टोस वाट वुड द नर्सेस नेक्स्ट एक्शन बी ए ओप्टेन ए क्रैश कार्ट B. Check the calcium level. C. Assess the dressing for drainage. D. Assess the blood pressure for hypertension. And the correct answer is B. Check the calcium level. During total thyroidectomy that is total surgical removal of thyroid gland damage can occur to parathyroid glands which are located on the thyroid gland your calcium levels can drop below normal as a result of the surgery because parathyroid glands regulate calcium levels in your blood hence calcium levels should be monitored after thyroidectomy Which of the following nursing diagnosis would be most appropriate for a patient with an intestinal obstruction? A. Chronic pain related to abdominal distension. B. Fluid volume deficit related to nausea and vomiting. C. Urinary retention related to fluid volume deficit. D. Impaired swallowing related to NPO status. Nothing per oral status. and the correct answer is b fluid volume deficit related to nausea and vomiting fluid volume deficit is a dangerous complication of intestinal obstruction which can lead to organ failure shock and death treating dehydration is important iv fluids may be started to correct electrolyte imbalance A nurse notes that the physician has documented a diagnosis of presbycusis on a patient's chart. She plans care knowing the condition is A nystagmus that occurs with aging B tinnitus that occurs with aging C a sensorineural hearing loss that occurs with aging D a conductive hearing loss that occurs with aging and the correct answer is c a sensorineural hearing loss that occurs with aging presbycusis is the loss of hearing that gradually occurs in most individuals as they grow older hearing loss is a common disorder associated with aging The primary reason for infusing blood at a rate of 60 ml per hour is to help prevent which of the following complications? A allergic reaction B red blood cell hemolysis C fluid volume overload D emboli formation And the correct answer is C fluid volume overload When too much blood is transfused too quickly into a person it can cause acute left ventricular failure which is also called transfusion associated circulatory overload A nurse has been assigned to a patient with Beugers disease Which of the following anatomic areas are most often affected by this vascular condition A lower back B head and neck C chest D hands and feet and the correct answer is D hands and feet Beugers disease or Burgers disease is also called thromboangitis obliterans In Beugers disease your blood vessels swell and can become blocked with blood clots that is thrombi 
This eventually damages or destroys skin tissues and may lead to infection and gangrene. Bugger's disease usually first shows in the hands and feet and may expand to affect larger areas of your arms and legs. A patient is suspected of having systemic lupus erythematosus. The nurse monitors the patient knowing that which of the following is one of the initial characteristic signs of systemic lupus erythematosus. A. Lupus nephritis B. Weight gain C. Rash on the face across the bridge of the nose and on the cheeks D. Elevated RBC count And the correct answer is C. Rash on the face across the bridge of the nose and on the cheeks Systemic lupus erythematosus is an autoimmune disease in this disease, the immune system of the body mistakenly attacks healthy tissue. It can affect the skin, joints, kidneys, brain and other organs. A patient has been admitted to the hospital with the diagnosis of acute pancreatitis and a nurse is assessing this patient's pain. What type of pain is consistent with this diagnosis? A. Severe and unrelenting pain located in the epigastric area and radiating to the back. B. Burning and aching pain located in the left lower quadrant and radiating to the hip. C. Severe and unrelenting pain located in the left lower quadrant and radiating to the groin. D. Burning and aching pain located in the epigastric area and radiating to the umbilicus. And the correct answer is A. Severe and unrelenting pain located in the epigastric area and radiating to the back. In acute pancreatitis, the pain in the upper abdomen radiates into the back. The pain usually increases by eating, especially foods high in fat. A nurse is providing instructions to a patient with breast cancer who is receiving cyclophosphamide. The appropriate advice is to A. Increase fluid intake to 2000 to 3000 ml daily. B. Take the medication with food. C. Increase potassium intake while taking the medication. D. Decrease sodium intake while taking the medication. And the correct answer is A. Increase fluid intake to 2000 to 3000 ml daily. Increasing the fluid intake while receiving cyclophosphamide prevents harmful effects on the patient's bladder. An emergency department nurse is assessing a patient who has sustained a blunt injury to the chest wall. Which of these signs would indicate the presence of a pneumothorax in this patient? A. Diminished breath sounds B. A low respiratory rate C. A sucking sound at the site of injury D. The presence of a barrel chest And the correct answer is A. Diminished breath sounds Pleural space is present between the lungs and chest wall the presence of air or gas in the cavity between the lungs and the chest wall causing collapse of the lung is called pneumothorax. As the chest expansion is significantly decreased on the side of the pneumothorax, breath sounds are dramatically decreased due to decreased ventilation on the side of pneumothorax. A nurse is reviewing the history of a patient with bladder cancer. 
she expects to note documentation of which most common symptom of this type of cancer a hematuria b dysuria c frequency of urination d urgency of urination and the correct answer is a hematuria hematuria that is blood in urine with no pain is the most common symptom of bladder cancer A nurse is caring for a patient with increased intracranial pressure. She would note which of the following trends in vital signs if the intracranial pressure is rising. A decreasing pulse, decreasing respirations and increasing blood pressure. B increasing pulse, increasing respirations and decreasing blood pressure. C increasing pulse, decreasing respirations and increasing blood pressure d decreasing pulse increasing respirations and decreasing blood pressure and the correct answer is